Hi, welcome to the English Language Institute of Singapore's podcast, also known as the Ellis Podcast. Here, we discuss current topics related to the teaching, learning, and assessment of English language with our very own master teachers. I am Victoria, and I am your host. Today, we are exploring inquiry through dialogue, one of the three pedagogical emphases of English Language Syllabus 2020. Here with me is EL Master Teacher, Madam Joy Lee, who will be discussing with us student groupings for interaction. Hello, Joy. Hello. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? I've been a master teacher for 13 years, nine of the years for the whole existence of Ellis. Uh, altogether, I've been in service for 38 years, teaching English literature mm -hmm. and also GP at the A-levels. Today's inquiry through dialogue topic is about student collaboration and thinking routines. So what does student collaboration look like in the classroom? I think this term collaboration has been around for a long time. It's even one of the key strategies in uh, MP2. That's the master plan of IT2, um, two, version 2. I think many people mistake collaboration for cooperative learning or just getting students into groups. It's only through talking that they can begin to collaborate. So this talk must be trained in it. They need to know the routines, to have some established routines. It's only through getting this settled that you can get them to start thinking productively. So what thinking routines do you find have been useful in conducting dialogues in the classroom? When I was doing school attachment, I've done simple things like think, pair, share. So what I did was I really got them to speak spend one minute quiet to think. And I was very intentional about that. If anybody like laughed or anything, we'll start all over again. Mm. So after a while, they, they got the hang of it. Uh, what was important was to give them the topic, give them the time, the quiet time to think. And then after that, they got into pairs. And they talked at the same time. So the whole class will be rather noisy, but it will be a meaningful talk. So I found that this helped them to express their ideas, their opinions about the topic, uh, which is important. I also got them to listen to other perspectives. And then when they had different perspectives, they started to negotiate. And when they negotiated, they had to use like respectful language to negotiate, to defer. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, they start acting more mature, I think. That is very essential. And uh, I found that very true, especially when I was teaching general paper. How do you structure learners' talk? So you would come down to my instructions, right? So I will tell them things like, okay, this is the topic or this is a stand expressed by somebody and they had to respond to it with their own opinions and also think about the reasons uh, why they held that opinion. So after that, they paired together and started taking turns to express their opinions. And if their opinions deferred, then they had to justify and then negotiate. So if they negotiated and they came to, you know, like a compromise, then that would be what we call co-constructing knowledge. Mm. What about the KWL routine from Ogle that's published in 1986? I think it's about what I know, what I want to know, and what I've learned. What would KWL look like in an EL classroom? Yeah, uh, most of the time, the schemes of work are structured around themes. Mm -hmm. That's a very good place to start. They can do a KWL the same way that we have done it with the teachers that we train at the, in the PLPs. They can begin by thinking about what they already know. So this is tapping their prior knowledge. 
part and parcel of the CLIPS principles of English language teaching. Then they also write down the questions. Asking questions is really a very uh, metacognitive skill. They have to ask good questions to reveal like what is it that they, they might be interested in or their own learning gaps. So when they do that, uh, we can use that to monitor their learning. So it is used for AFL purposes. So you can see it's like AFL of AFL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, at the end of the whole PLP, or let's say in a, you were asking about English language lesson, at the end of the lesson, then they use the L, the what we have learned, for review of their own learning. Mm. So you see students, this would be self-directed learning. So they independently monitor their own progress. Then they can tick off all the questions that have already been addressed and also identify those that haven't been addressed. And then the teacher herself can also uh, use that kind of information to approach certain groups or certain individual students to address those questions that were not answered. Mm. In the book Making Thinking Visible by Richard Morrison and Church from 2011, there's the thinking routines matrix. Are there any routines in that matrix you'd like to elaborate on? I can see routines like see, think, wonder. Then I used to think. That's for reflection and metacognition. And circle viewpoints. Talking about perspective taking. I mean, these are quite well known. And I, I know that Many secondary school teachers are using these and they are actually integrated into our SLS, which is a platform very important for many teachers because they need to use this platform to uh, design lessons, online lessons. What I like about it is these routines are already sort of embedded there. So what teachers need to do is just to select the appropriate routine. Which routines do you think are better? Actually, I think all of them are useful, but it is up to the teacher how well she uses a routine. And she can use just a few. And if she uses it well, then she has done a good job. She doesn't need to use every one of them. And I've seen some teachers use KWL very poorly. So that then it cannot function as a monitoring tool. When you can use KWL well, you can do diagnostic, you can monitor their learning, and you can encourage self-directed learning. So that's what a good teacher can do with the same tool. So it's about quality, not quantity. Yes, and it's also about how a teacher uses it. Mm. Are there any resources that you can direct or recommend teachers for thinking routines? Um, I think Project Zero Visible Thinking Initiatives has uh, plenty of these and um, the whole lot uh, of about making thinking visible is uh, quite popular among secondary school teachers. Yeah. So Project Zero Visible Thinking Initiatives is available online? Yes. Yeah. Okay. How important do you think the thinking routines are for English language teachers? I think it's going to be very important because of ELS 2020. It's one of the three foresight. So the other two being uh, multiliteracies and this topic inquiry through dialogue. And interestingly, I mean, this actually illustrates that these three are not discrete. So we have been talking about inquiry through dialogue, right? But you see how meta Mission tools are instrumental to inquiry through dialogue. Thank you, Joy, for giving us your time and insights. Today, we've discussed about student collaboration and thinking routines. We hope you can apply these insights in your classrooms and share them with your colleagues. If you would like to find out more about what we touched on, please look at our show notes, which have links to their resources. I'm Victoria. Good day.